Welcome to Digitally Matters, a podcast for anything digital that matters to you and your business. I'm your host, Ray Baggio. In this episode, I am joined by a licensed architect. She will share with us how inbound marketing has been very influential in terms of growing her own business. She will also share with us why helping struggling architects market themselves is the key for her attracting more clients more than ever. I think you'll also find it interesting how she manages her time and the relevance of digital apps or tools in growing her own business or firm. Honestly, I was really surprised. Okay, now let's jump in and listen to the conversation. Please tell us more about you, JP. Hello, I'm JP Espino. I'm an architect. Um, So that's my first profession. But what I do on the side is mostly uh, teaching other architects to do uh, digital marketing on how they will be able to attract their clients. So that's my side gig. Uh, Most of the people who know me, who follows me, calls me uh, with my branding, the digital architect. And how long have you been doing this, JP? Just to be clear, my services are still architecture, meaning my main profession is still architecture. So my clients are still the people who wants to have their residence designed or Mm -hmm. uh, who wants to do, uh, let's say, a building or whatever construction. That's still my main gig. But it just so happened that uh, five years ago, I started doing freelance jobs meaning getting online jobs. And from there, I learned from other freelancers like Mr. Ray Fabio hmm. on how to do digital marketing, social media marketing, how to get your clients, how to do email marketing. So um, because of that, I thought of teaching this same strategies to architects as well. Because one of the main problems of architects or you know, people in our industry is getting clients. So when I recognize, when I realize how to do it, that it can be done, it's easier to just attract them rather than chasing them. Mm -hmm. So that's when I realized that I I can do something for my community. So I've been an architect for 16 years. Wow. A freelancer for six years. And I have been teaching them, um, being doing seminars, uh, workshops and all to architects, engineers, people in my industry for about two or three years now. When it comes to attracting clients, do you have a specific market or audience or do you only cater to a certain brand or a certain client? Okay. Uh, it's funny how it happens because my target um, is really, as an architect, is really those who are, uh, let's say, the middle-class Filipinos who think that architecture is only for the rich. So... Oh. You can say, ako yung pangmasa na architect. That's my target. That's my mm-hmm. target market. But I'm not really focusing on how I market myself as an architect. But mostly, what uh, just a coincidence that I started marketing myself, um, just giving value or helping other architects by yeah, by teaching them how I do it. I'm not really focusing on how I will get clients, but Mm -hmm. because of the attention, because of the engagement, because of how my community being in the design and construction industry are seeing me somehow with uh, maybe in a position of authority in my area, Mm -hmm. that brings in the clients. So Uh my target now is only specific to the architects in my field. Oh, but okay. as a coincidence, I get my clients as an architect. So, iba yung service ko talaga. Mm-hmm. Pero because I am giving I am giving value, I am I'm there all the time. I mm-hmm. always put myself out there and the more architects rec- that recognize me or the more people that see me in the same industry Somehow it's you know it explodes and there are the ones who are recommending me now. So because of that, I'm getting that much attention or maybe a little bit of attention. 
somehow more people are seeing me and this mm-hmm. new client for my architecture business are coming in. So parang naging ano na siya, um, consequence na lang yung new clients mm-hmm. but it, it still keeps on coming. So it, the, 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 the cool thing about this is this um, you I am not really marketing myself to earn money mm-hmm. but really just being out there and showing what I can do to help. So I, uh, it is a better strategy for me na hindi sinasadya. Mm-hmm. So, um, naging ano na lang eh, um, naging sideline na lang yung marketing stuff on the, on how do I really um, sell my services as an architect. But because of what I've been doing, dumating na yung client. Not really nice. focusing on my target market as an architect, but really just focusing on how I can help. That's interesting. That's really interesting. <laughs> so I'm curious now, though. Um, you've been an architect for 16 years now, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you started as an architect, I'm pretty sure that you did not start doing this, um, uh, this attracting clients thing, like how you help mm-hmm. your fellow architects to market themselves uh-huh. uh, you started doing this and you've been doing this for six years only so when you started mm-hmm. um as an as an architect comparing that time or that period in your in your career mm-hmm. to what you're doing right now how you're branding yourself how you're marketing yourself how you're making yourself relevant to other architects out there would you say you're getting a lot of clients um doing this kind of strategy or the other the, the the traditional or the 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 older you still attracted a lot of clients compared to what you're doing now or how you're doing things right now yes it's a big difference um before oh. when i didn't know anything about digital marketing when i didn't know anything about uh, marketing mm-hmm. uh, as a whole um i'm just an architect that's all i have mm-hmm. and i it's really hard for me to get clients even if I get clients, it's hard for me to ask them to pay me. So um, before I knew how to do this, before I learned all these strategies, I could probably get uh, maybe one or two clients per year. Per year? Okay. Per year. Oh. So I really have to be employed and I cannot, uh, I don't have the guts to to start my own architectural firm because I know it's hard for me to get clients. Mm, but when I okay. started doing uh, these strategies, you know, um, more on relying in the inbound marketing rather than the out- outbound marketing, rather than the traditional marketing, mm-hmm. um, I'm getting more clients. Um, for uh, right at the moment, I'm getting at least 20 30 inquiries per month. Whoa, that's a lot. And I'm closing about five to, let's say about five to eight clients per month. Per month. Compared to um, when I was doing traditional marketing, meaning referral ni mami, meaning mm-hmm. kilala mo ako, mm-hmm. at tita kilala mo siya. Mm-hmm. That's how we do traditional marketing, right? It's really yeah. just word of mouth. Um, you're just at the corner. Nobody knows what you're doing. Nobody knows what you can do for them. Mm-hmm. And we are just very shy on what we can offer. We're not really, we're not really uh, getting out, but ourselves out there to talk about what we can do for them. And we're just relying on kakilala ni mami, kakilala ni daddy, or pinsan ni ganito. That's how Filipino do business, right? Um, mm-hmm. Referrals. Yes. Um, sure. At that time, Certi na ako if I get two clients in a year, three clients in a year. So I still have to to do other stuff. Like um, I started with servicing other designers or other architects or other businesses doing odd uh, jobs like doing rendering, doing multiple jobs. Mm-hmm. I started with that because I cannot uh, I cannot rely on my own income as an architect. Oh, so okay. only then when I realized and learned how to do this digital marketing stuff, that's the only time that I attract the clients. I don't even have to uh, chase them. I don't even have to 
uh, show them uh, what I can do because they're the ones coming to me. In fact, um, I'm now at a position that I don't even um, offer my services. I see people, my followers, being being on a digital platform. My followers are the ones who are commenting on group chats, are actually recommending me to other clients. My clients are recommending me to other people. So it, it grew uh, faster when I'm using digital marketing. Okay, let's now talk about you getting clients or attracting clients. How do you attract clients? Do you filter them? Do you choose which clients you accommodate or every inquiry you just accommodate and then just delegate or share the project to other freelancers or to other architects out there? Uh, yes, I do refer them to other architects, especially if they're far from here. I, being an architect in, uh, in Manila, yes, I can still do projects anywhere in the Philippines. So oh, even nice. if their project is in Cebu mm-hmm. or in, in the say, Cagayan de Oro, I can still do that. Um, that is still inside my life as, as an architect. Mm. But for easier uh, communication, for easier checking of the uh, construction and all that, usually I refer them to people in their location. So, um, so yeah, at, I'm at the point now that because there are a lot of inquiries now, I also refer to other architects. Mm-hmm. Uh, but of course, I still uh, somehow just recommend them to people I know just to make mm-hmm. sure that uh, the deal and whatever transaction is going to be okay. Um, with the other question of um, getting inquiries and if if I filter them, yes. the good thing with um, the good thing with having digital content every day is somehow whatever I put out there, I am I am already attracting a certain group of people which are my target or my target uh, market, oh, right? Okay. So um, as I told you, my target market are mostly um, the masses. Yung masang, yes. You know, no? uh-huh. So um, that's why when you go to my page, I usually talk in Tagalog or Taglish. And mm-hmm. I usually um, answer even comments very casually. They say, instead of saying thank you, I'd say tenshu or salamat. So okay. it's a bit cute. <laughs> it's a bit dialogues. It's a bit more uh, laid back because that's exactly what uh, was the persona of the target market that I am targeting. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. because I am already creating daily content, it already filters out who gets attracted to my contents. So usually, those who um, actually go and message me and ask are already the filtered ones. Mm-hmm. Kung baga, nasala na sila because of the content. If in case, um, medyo malayo pa din, then that's the time that I, I suggest them to other uh, architects. But uh, I can do anything and everything because my, my skills is very, ano naman eh, how it's called it, um, very Flexible. diversified naman yung, yung experience ko and skills mm-hmm. ko. I started mm-hmm. with, um, to be honest, I started with high-rise building. My first job was project architect for high-rise building. Mm-hmm. And then I went to um, commercials, being um, mall architects for Robinsons. And I was the youngest who, who were handling four malls at the time. And then mm-hmm. I also went to... Um, I, from commercial, I also did a lot of residentials because I'm mm-hmm. doing uh, design and build. From there, I even did a few industrial projects like um, gasoline stations. So my um, my experience is really diversified that anybody who would um, go in my inbox and ask for an inquiry, most of the time, I can still handle those jobs. It's really just um, the only thing that limits me on doing all of this stuff is the time mm-hmm. back na ng work. but if I can still accommodate them especially if, if the client when you, when you talk to the client most of the time you you have a certain feel that this is a good client and you really like you really want to do the, the project for them I really want to close the projects for my own uh, firm mm-hmm. but um, let's say there are other clients that I don't think is fit for me that those are the ones that I refer to other architects. Other than 
helping out your fellow architects um, mm-hmm. so that they can market themselves properly and, and efficiently and helping the community and, and getting clients because of, of your inbound marketing um, strategies or initiatives. Do you have specific mm-hmm. projects or courses or any experiments that you're working on recently that, uh, that are related to, um, mm-hmm. to what, you're, what you're advocating for? Yeah, actually, it just starts from the same core, mm-hmm. which is trying to help other architects to get their clients. Okay. But from there, it has to branch out to a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the past months, before this COVID thing happened, <clears throat> I've been doing the digital architect workshops, okay. which is a workshop teaching this uh, digital marketing strategies to architects. So we already went around the Philippines and we're getting a lot Ooh. of... Um, other invitations from other parts of the country as well so we went to Baguio we went to uh we went to Bulacan Mm -hmm. Pampanga we are actually scheduled for Cebu and Davao Mm -hmm. and Zamboanga but you know COVID happened so um before this this happened we have a full year of uh scheduled for the digital architect workshop mm-hmm. and because of the uh the pandemic that we're now quarantined and we cannot uh go outside and have a face-to-face workshops mm-hmm. we already uh we also have a few seminars we are offering seminars for workshops to all the other architects or um uap chapters uh, they can invite me as a speaker or there is a GMM meeting or workshops, and those events will be we will be able to apply for CPD points for our license. Um, just recently, uh, the headquarters United Architects of the Philippines National Office invited me to be the speaker for one of the lectures. Uh, nice. We did two seminars for. Um, for this, I know, for last month, mm-hmm. uh, which I think 1,600 architects attended. Wow, that's a and lot. Uh, again, from the workshops, the face to face workshops, then the online workshops, now we're actually doing a book. So, in case um, they cannot catch me on actual face to face workshops or they are busy and they can't get to attend an online workshop. We will be releasing a book entitled uh, Business of Architecture in Mm -hmm. the Digital Era. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a guide for the new architects, tenured architects, or those who, uh, let's say, students who wants to start their career based on what the digital age needs. Because how we do business before is very different on how we do business now and yes. how we should do business in the future. Because every it's always changing, right? Yes, so yes, um, right. we're somehow in the middle. Um, we know the changes in the you know in the digital age in the digital uh, marketing area. So somehow we already already adjusted on that. But because of this pandemic, we are still rapidly changing again so hopefully i will be able to help them um to start up their business their architectural firm Mm -hmm. now in the digital age uh that they can do uh the way i'm doing it so my firm the the digital architect firm has been in uh, operations for the past six years and it is 100 percent a virtual office meaning we don't have an actual office Everything we do is online, from talking to clients to um, to engaging with other engineers for consultants and um, all the other communication or um, teamwork that we have to do. Everything is online, even documentations. So, and I've been doing that for the past six years, right? Wala pa si COVID. That's why when this COVID thing happened. It was very easy for me to just adjust and continue with my with my operations. So I hope I will be able to show mm-hmm. and help other architects. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're a student about to graduate or if you if you are um, if you already graduate but is still waiting for a board exam. 
or if you are already a licensed architect or if you've been an architect for 20 years whatever is in my book the digital architect um business of architecture in the digital world will be able to help them start up or set up their virtual office as, as an architect oh. so there okay Haba. yeah yeah I can only imagine how overwhelming it can be. If I were in your shoes, then I would have probably a lot of calendars or everything would be mixed up. For you, do you have any productivity routines or any principle when in terms of doing the things you do? I mean, how do you juggle them? Okay, I have... I have... Uh, yes, first of all, yes, it's true. It's really hard to even just know what you are about to do for the day mm -hmm. or just to check your schedule for the whole week because of a lot of we i do a lot of talks i do a lot of facebook live i do a lot of interviews on top of what i need to do on my projects doing the drawings coordinating with engineers coordinating mm -hmm. with the clients and all mm -hmm. that but i have uh i have a lucky charm Oh, uh, okay. I think I know who Ito that na. is. I have a lucky charm. What <laughs> I know that I have to do okay. is to get an accountability body. Okay. So it's simply somebody who will just ask you, okay, what's your um, agenda for the day? What do you need to do today? Mm -hmm. What do you need to finish? Reminder for who who you need to talk to, what time and all that. And uh -huh. I... I you know, the best thing that I did, especially now, uh -huh. is that I asked my daughter to I be knew my it. accountability buddy. <laughs> so she's it. my lucky charm. Nice. She settles everything. She's actually my back end. The whole back end. From administrative jobs to scheduling to even setting up my ring light for interviews or <laughs> attaching the, the mic for the podcast oh, or nice. even... Um, calling the the Lala Move driver if he already delivered the plans to the client. Everything oh. she does that. So I think that's the best thing that I did for myself because I cannot be on top of everything. I just know what I have to do, but because there's a lot of things that has to to do right away, has to happen. And sabay sabay talaga. So I asked uh I asked her help for uh to just help me get organized. And she actually do a lot of things. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we are about to release the book. Uh, I did all the draft for the book. She's the one who's doing the layouting. Mm -hmm. So, sanay nagka-copy paste and lipat na sa layout ng book. And then, after that, I will just have to do proofreading. And she can do that. She can fin finish, uh, I think there's one day she'll finish 54 pages of the books. So copy paste oh. lang naman, but still she's very very productive. So yon, I think what we need is to get somebody who are um, really concerned mm -hmm. on what you do, Generally what concerned. what why you are doing this, mm -hmm. and um, it's not just a job for them, but they actually care for the company and for whatever you're doing. So. Um, she's 15 years old, but she's doing at least three jobs that I know na pwede kong ihar sa iba. But she's very, she's doing very well. So I think what I can advise other people who has a lot of things to do, mm -hmm. in multitasking, mm -hmm. is to have an accountability body that you really trust and who has a, a genuine concern for your company. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. And. I would like to ask you now, is she listening? <laughs> is she beside you right yes, now? Yes, she's listening, yeah. Uh, she's listening. So are you paying her doing these jobs for you? I'm just curious. Yes. <laughs> yes, she's getting paid. Oh, so, good for you. No my paso. When, when there's classes, of ah. course, I give her allowance, right? Nice. So now that there's no classes, she doesn't have allowance, that's her salary. But mm -hmm. um, every time I close a deal, or every time I get a full payment of a project, I also give them a bonus. Nice. So, yeah. So, she, she's compensated well, but she still wants to wear, I don't know, wants to get a raise. <laughs> she deserves it. Yeah, I am giving her for that. <laughs> okay. Well, mm -hmm. uh, she deserves it. I was about to ask you if you have, uh, if you use specific tools or apps, 
uh, personally or for work perhaps the the best person to ask this is your daughter because she's the one basically she's the one helping you manage your business right so okay, prob- here, join us. <laughs> so how do you do it come here yeah <laughs> how do you do it how do you uh organize things or simply paano mo kulitin si mommy on what i should do? come on don't be just, shy <laughs> come on just share a bit of your ano, of your tricks yeah and, and tools if you have tools or apps on top of things and make sure that i can deliver and finish my job at least for the day if mm-hmm. you do that every day uh, i believe the first thing that i do is always when she asks me mm-hmm. to make her remind something mm-hmm. I'd ask myself and I'd ask Siri to remind me whatever she did say too because I am more likely to forget rather than her. So basically, you just record all my all the things that I have to, all my tasks in mm. your phone to make sure that you have an alarm for it. Ah, okay, okay. Well, how about you, JP? Personally, do you have like, uh, do you use tools on your phone or on your laptop to manage your projects? sa utak ko lang talaga eh. Alam ko lang kung, anyway, the the clients will will have a certain follow-up din, di ba? So they will mm. message you and all that. Mm-hmm. So, um, mostly, I just keep a certain number of clients. Okay. Let's say, in a month, I will only do five to six clients. On top of that, I will just have to uh, move it to another month. And mm. so right away, when I close the deal, I will already tell them, okay, this is your, um, I'm, I'm already booked at the moment, so I will be able to start your your project, let's say, a month after, or 48, 45 days after. Mm-hmm. So, um, I the, what I can do is really just finish one project sa pinakamabilis. So, if I can do it in one month, finish the drawings and everything, coordination, sign and seal, printing, sending to clients, Bill of materials. I I try to finish one project one in one month, so I can close it. Mm-hmm. If I close it, then I can handle another project. So I think that's how I organize it. And in lang talagang kaya ko. I see. In lang muna. So I try to limit it for five to six clients in a month, and then um, to be honest, the main core team of my company is really just three people. Me, uh, my daughter, and another uh, another friend who's helping me, mm-hmm. and then the rest are just consultants or uh, subcontractors. So the communication is still in a manageable level, even the scheduling coordination is still in the manageable level. So I try to keep it that way. More than that, malilito na ako. Siguro yun na lang talaga yung trick ko to organize things. So, uh, the way I understand it is, you, you're not uh, really relying on a certain app or certain apps or tools, but Hello. you write them down. Mm-hmm. You write things down, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Hmm? Interesting. Because <laughs> I was actually uh, hoping, not really hoping, but I'm expecting that you will give me more at least more than three apps to help you manage or at least your daughter would give us an idea how she manages all your projects um how it manages your time what you need to do uh, during the day um okay. i was actually we're, really on, no, we're, we're on a very laid back operations we don't even have a schedule so we wake up at the time we wake up we don't care if let's say we don't even have to uh to tell ourselves that we have to wake up at 8, or start five, everything yeah. at 9. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Napaka-relax pa rin ang schedule namin. So, um, maybe we have to organize ourselves more, but somehow, we are still managing it that way. Um, we don't have special apps that we're using basically for um, just tracking the, uh, the activities on the, the projects and even the bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. We just use Excel. Okay. Okay. Kanoon lang kasi yung ginagamit namin for for um for graphic design mm-hmm. and our social media materials and all that. We're just using Canva. Okay. So Canva. So it's really just okay. Canva, Excel, and um, of course my software is for drawings and design, which is Art mm-hmm. uh, And but not not specific naman siya on ano on on organizing or administration of a project. Okay. Very uh, basic lang din talaga kami. 
So our organization is really just talking to each other. Okay. Just okay. the communication. Every day, every day before before you go to sleep, since, since um my daughter's handling my my schedule and everything, she just asks me, okay, what's your job for tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And then I'll think I'll think about it right away. Okay, at yung kailangan go eh, ito kailangan ko submit. And that's it. Then kita bukasan when when we wake up, you know then she will just remember. Uh, she will just uh remind me na, okay. This is what you have to do today. You have to finish this, and then, and then after that, the red direction. Eh? It's really just open communication. Uh, siguro one thing that I do to mm. make sure na hindi ko makalimutan is right away. Eh, if I think of something, I send a message, even if magkatabi lang kami. I send a message na naka audio, and oh. sinasabi ko na agad what we can do or what we have okay. to do para we can get back to it right away. Kasi baka makalimutan. Anyways, let's talk about other people uh, besides your daughter. Do you have people you look up to and follow and who have been influential in terms of how you do things, how you do work, or how you manage your life or your time? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's just move on from the cliche that I look up to my parents because that's what people <laughs> expect me to answer. <laughs> okay. Diba? Usually, yun yung cliche. But... Um, Siguro what I would mention is what helped me at least uh, to start up to have the right mindset is really the Filipinas Movement Tribe. So oh, John's. Hindi to okay. ano, John's. Diba? Yeah, uh, John yeah. Pagulayan. Mm-hmm. And, and the tribe itself. Um, mm-hmm. To be honest, I enrolled in the tribe for I think two years ago, mm-hmm. but I was in a not so good time of my life. Okay. So I dropped out after a month but I've been there for only a month and the only thing that I need to get is really the mindset Mm -hmm. the mindset that you know you just have to uh, have a specific niche you just have to know what you want to do what you want to offer your your clients Mm -hmm. how you can help and everything else will just will just fall into its proper place if you have the right mindset, mm-hmm. um, one thing that I learned from that is also that you have to take action. Yes. Always okay. take action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have to worry if it's a wrong action or if I'm going to fail. Because before that, before I joined the tribe, I always think of, hindi ko pa alam me. I mm-hmm. don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm not ready. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm not. Uh, I maybe I'm not good enough. You know, that's that's how I think before that. So, um, because of the right mindset that whatever I want to do, I know that I can do it. Maybe it's just a, it, the only difference is the step that I have to go through or the journey between that, but I can still do it as long as I take action. So, I think that's the first thing that really, uh, that I always think of if uh, in, in everything I do, it's really just take action. So, that's one. Mm-hmm. Um, John Pagla. Dan Pagulayan or the freelance you can try. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not. I um, there are the, the few people in the freelance industry who really help me as well. Not specifically on a certain skill mm-hmm. or maybe teaching me how to do it. Wala eh. Wala naman talagang nagmentor sa akin step by step. Okay, ito yung gawin mo. Yes. Okay. Ito yung next na gawin mo. Ito yung dapat na um, pinag-aralan mo. Wala. Honestly. Um, nobody taught me on mm. how to do it. But mm. what's really important is they believe in me. Um, another person that believed in me when I was starting out is Ginger. Um, Arboleda. Ginger Arboleda of yes. Kakumo, mm-hmm. of um, a freelancer fair, um, Manila Workshop. Yes. So she's the first person who really believed in me. Um, she yung nag invite sa akin to do a workshop. At that time, hindi pa yung the digital architect workshop. She was just um, Fiverr's how to start earning online through Fiverr. So, yun, yun pa lang. Doon ako nag-start. Um, of course, alongside with Ginger, Maurice Soriano of um, of Union Bank. Bank. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, he also helped me with that. Um, Fred. Mosqueda. Fred Mosqueda okay. has been uh, guiding me. Okay. Mostly 
ano na nga eh, it's not the skill, it's not how you handle their clients, it's really just backup support. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that really helps. That helps that um, there are people who believe in you and mm -hmm. there are people who you know that will still be there and will always be, you know, isang message lang, isang chat lang, isang tawag lang, and they will be there to help you. So I believe this is these are the core people who believe in me when I started and yun, yun yun talagang nakatulong sa akin. That's what really caught me in the freelance world. Doon ako na shock. Um, of course, before going into freelance, before doing online jobs, mm -hmm. I am in a corporate setting. And in a corporate setting, it's very different. Uh oh, True. sorry, meron, meron yatang maglilibing sa labas. Oh. We are in front of a chapel. Okay. May nakaburo sa harap namin. Gusto mong ikat muna? No, no, no. Let's Let's proceed. <laughs> so there is there is another interesting thing yes. that happens in your podcast. Yes, it's very interesting. Habang may kausap ka, meron na bubulo sa <laughs> What really caught me, I was really shocked, is um in the freelance world, ang una mo talagang mapapansin is uh, people, at least most, most people in, in the freelance industry has a heart that wants to help. You know, oh, yeah. um, very True. seldom you'll see someone that will judge you. Um, very seldom that you'll get to meet someone that will really say, uh, wala ka namang alam eh, or if you don't know anything, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, um, the people that I met, at least for me, I'm very mm -hmm. I'm very uh, grateful that the, the people that, that I met in the finance industry are the people who really helped me, lifts me up, motivates me, and believed in me even in, in the time as in wala akong alam. Mm -hmm. uh, wala akong alam, alam on how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that wherever I am now and how my business, my architectural business has grown is um, a very big chunk of that is because of that. One last thing. One last thing. You've been doing digital um, strategy and, and doing digital initiatives or inbound marketing for at least six years. So you've, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you've observed certain behaviors or, or practices by other people um, online or how they use uh, digital or digital technology. Are mm -hmm. there any specific um, behaviors you hate people are doing? Sorry, certain behaviors that? That people are doing. Let's say uh, things that really irked you or your pet peeve when it comes to uh, how oh. people behave online or use uh, di digital technology. Mm, okay. Um, it's not really in the freelance industry, mm -hmm. but more on those who are not in it. So the first things that um, the struggle that I encountered is people who are thinking that Whatever we're doing online is not legit. Whatever oh. we're doing online is not real at all. Um, mm -hmm. To be honest, in the first four years of me doing freelancing, my mom would constantly tell me, maghanap ka nga ng totoong trabaho. Oh. Wala ka namang ginagawa sa bahay. Okay. So the, the, that, that's what people think of uh, what freelance or what online jobs is. And now, after six years, I think I already... Uh, made her realize that this is a real job and where I'm actually still doing the same service that I should be doing as an architect. In fact, even more because I am serving more architects as well. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I really uh, struggled with, with uh, people who doesn't understand what we're doing and who are, uh, ano ba, contrapelo. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, <Yeah>. True. <laughs> what else? Okay. Uh, in the freelance industry, maybe what I don't like mm -hmm. is people who are, um, I don't, I forgot the term. Yung, yung feeling nila, alam nila lahat. Oh, okay. Okay. The know-it-alls, yes. The, the know-it-alls. Know okay. English lang, yeah. Uh, I don't like that because there are a certain, uh, oh, uh, I don't want to use mindset. There's a certain attitude with a tiny portion of the freelance industry who are know-it-alls and um, you can feel mm -hmm. on the way they talk to you, on the way they they, they do their, I don't know, 
videos or whatever, their yes, content, true. it's really just bragging and not uh, not giving value. Mm-hmm. True. Really just showing others na magaling ako and all that. Pero uh, no, the focus should be on how you will be able to help others. And mm-hmm. so yun, there are a few, few lang naman, few people in our industry who are like that. I agree. I agree. And it's really sad because if, uh, well, based on what I've learned in school and what I also have observed over the years, the more you learn about something, especially if you're um, you're targeting a niche or you're trying to practice or to learn more about a certain skill, the more you understand, the more you acquire knowledge about a certain thing, the more you actually would realize if you really are learning from it, or from that mm-hmm. scale, you will actually realize that you know just too little. Anyways, uh, JP, you've been generous with your time and your daughter as well. Thank you for managing her time. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you. I, okay, <laughs> and that will be uh, that will be it for now, JP. And how can they reach out to you? How can they connect with you? If there are brands or fellow architects or freelancers who would like to reach out to you. Where can they find you? Um, yes, for those who have a few questions or would like um, to get to know more of my uh, advocacy, mm-hmm. uh, you may contact me or check my Facebook page, The Digital Architect, so or email jp at uh, jp the digital architect at gmail.com. So, yeah. Oh, meron na rin pala akong YouTube channel. They can also nice. watch... Um, videos on my YouTube channel um, www.youtube.com The Digital Architect So The Digital Architect lahat yun. Thank you! Oh, wait. One more thing. You have courses, mm. right? Or classes? Mm. Um, not at the moment. Okay. Wala pa kaming um, course or workshops ngayon. Okay. But I am offering uh, the, the Digital Architect workshop online to all the architects uh, who would like me to um, have it in their UAP chapters? Because oh. if we do it in their UAP chapters, we can get CPE points. So um, it's a win-win for both of us. Na, 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 natuto na sila because of the of what I'm teaching, and they also get CPE points that they will be able to use to apply for our license. Um, but yun nga, we will be releasing. Um, we will be releasing our book maybe next month, yung um, Business of Architecture in the Digital Era. So, yun, yun, yun pa lang siguro muna. Uh, e-course, uh, workshops, wala pa. Uh, the, the face-to-face workshop that I do is still different from from the online workshop that I'm offering to the UAP chapters. Yun. <laughs> So that wraps up our show. That's it for now, and thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you'll join me again here on Digitally Matters. This has been Ray Baggio. Until next time, ciao!